Tunney. Ladies and gentlemen, to be with Miss Lynn Henry Roach. Ladies and gentlemen, Sister Roach, how are you today, ma'am? <laughs> I'm blessed to be here with you, Kevin. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Guys, this is going to be awesome. This is our Power Connection Series, and you're going to find out why we have Miss Roach here with us today. She's our power player for today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited. This is the area of education, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about education today. We're going to be talking about opportunities today. We're going to be talking about languages all across the globe and the opportunities that Sister Roach is going to share with us today. So we are so excited about being with you today. And I want to open up, ladies and gentlemen, and let you know that our young people, uh, that, this is for everybody, of course, but specifically our young people, Sister Roach, I want you to understand there's nothing you can't do. But guess That's what? correct. Plus, supply yourself, right? There's no reason why you, I met somebody that knew eight languages, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. And Sister Roach knows us several of them as well today. But there's nothing you can't do because your mind will put you in the state of mind if you let it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So you know, please know that you can learn anything. But I want you to, moms and dads and uncles and aunties and grandma and grandpa, let your children, children, great grandchildren, grandchildren, children, let them know they can learn another language. They can be all they can be. You may, they may say, Papa, I want to learn a Japanese. Guess what? Help them get there. Get them to uh, somebody with Sister Roach. They may want to uh, learn Mandarin, ladies and gentlemen, or Spanish. Whatever they want to do, make sure you don't discourage them. Don't discourage them from learning, ladies and gentlemen. So we want you to learn. Uh, let them learn all they can, and there's nothing they can't be as well. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it. This is Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn, and my wonderful, beautiful host and uh, co-host, our today guest today, is, is Lynn. Henry Roach, ladies and gentlemen, she's with us today. Hey, real quickly, as we get started here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lynn Henry Roach brings over 25 years of industry experience as an interpreter, as a translator, educator, and business leader. I love it. Mrs. Roach, ladies and gentlemen, is originally from Haiti. Woohoo! I love it. I love that. And immigrated to the United States at the age of three. Wow, that's pretty cool, ladies and gentlemen. She is a nationally certified healthcare interpreter and graduate of Rutgers University. She is the owner of 4U Language Services, LLC. Thank you so much for being in business, Sister Roche. Amen. A full service multilingual translation and interpretation company in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. The Mecca of the world, ladies and gentlemen. Atlanta, Georgia, amen. Uh, her services include a live career coaching, business consulting and speaking about languages, careers to schools and colleges. She also enjoys being a panelist and speaker to programs offered to youth services, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait to have you, uh, Lynn, on in the future as well, ladies and gentlemen. She's going to be back with us again. Lynn uh, Henry Roach is most passionate about her family life. Amen. We talked about that before we got on, ladies and gentlemen. Humanitarian causes. Uh, education for all, amen. She's the author of the multi-billion dollar industry translation and interpretation. The future of language careers, ladies, the future in language careers is her book. And we're going to talk about how you get her book. We're going to talk about how to get in touch with her and all that. And behind that fact, I'm going to come off just a little bit so people can see this in the background for a second. This is the information guy. I want you guys to take a picture of this. For, I'm going to be on about maybe 15 seconds. I want you to take a picture of this, guys, if you're out there. You can see this banner in the background. Thank you. How? Oh, wasn't that beautiful? I love those colors, Lynn. Love those colors. Just how? Oh, Thank you. Thank nice. you. I have to give credit to my daughter who did yeah. it for me. <laughs> Tell us you did a great job on that. I love it. Yeah, she she's very artistic. <laughs> yes, I love the colors she picked, especially those are some of my, in fact, all of them are my favorite colors. <laughs> Amen. Well, Thank ladies, you. I'm going to pop back in here now, and uh, we're going to talk to Miss Lynn Roach today. Lynn, Lynn, welcome to Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn. How are you feeling today? <laughs> God bless you. Well, good morning, Kevin, and good morning to all the listeners out there. Um, I'm feeling great. I feel wonderful to be here with all of you to share some information and do a little bit of education and um, just share some, you know, good thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Well, we always like to hear what we didn't hear on the bio. You know, tell us a little bit about Lynn Roach. So tell us a little bit about you that you want to share with us before we get started. 
Well, sure. Well, as I said before, a little bit in my bio, I came here from Haiti, yeah. uh, which is a, a island nation in the Caribbean. We're near Jamaica, Cuba. Yes. And I came here um, when I was three, very long time ago. Uh -huh. I was educated here in the United States, and I spent also some time in Montreal, Canada, yes. which is uh, really um, a pivotal point where I began my language studies. Mm -hmm. And I started studying French at the age of 10 and continued on through uh, middle school, high school, and it was my second major in college. Yes. So um, I've always enjoyed learning languages. I speak yeah. um French, I speak Haitian Creole, English. Yeah. I've studied a little bit of Spanish, but I'm very passionate about Portuguese, which I've been studying wow. uh, since COVID shut down. I was, you know, that's been my little thing I've been doing on the side is uh, self teaching uh, yes. Portuguese language. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Hey, ladies Living here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I live here in Atlanta for about more than 20 years now. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so proud and excited for you and your family, bless your family today too, Sister Rocha as well. So we're excited about everybody that's connected to you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kevin Vaughn with you on uh, Power Connections, our Power Connection series on the MLT Network. And uh, we're here with Ms. Lynn Henry Roach, ladies and gentlemen, having some fun. We're gonna be talking about the multi-billion dollar industry of, lang of translation and interpretation in the area of language. When Sister Roach guys told me about this, I could not believe the multi, I, I knew it was in the millions, but multi-billion dollar industry. And of course, we're talking global as well. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about it because the world, Lynn, has opened up, you know, uh, with the internet, of course, for sure. And with the shutdown of, um, of a lot of things we were doing, you know, during the COVID time, you know, we had to learn, do some things. Things had to change dramatically. And I hope people were looking at, you know, starting their own businesses, learning a new language, maybe five or six languages, you know, because we were shut down pretty much. So I hope a lot of people learned a new language during the last, what, 20 months, I'll say for sure. That is so powerful. But Lynn, if you would, I want to just turn this over to you because we want to hear from you. What's the opportunities? What's the, uh, what we have to do, you know, for our schooling and uh, what does it take to get into this multi-billion dollar business, not only for our adults, but for our young people and the importance of a second, third language today as well. If you don't mind, take it away. Well, thank you, Kevin. And um, again, listeners, I appreciate your time here for me to share a little bit of information about the translation and interpretation industry yes. and the study of languages. Yes. So uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to address the youth. Yes. I'm talking to those who are in elementary, hmm. middle school, high school, college, graduate programs. I'm encouraging you to not just meet the prerequisites for graduation, but to excel and master your fluency in a language which is what you need to be fluent in order to be an interpreter or translator. You can't just study it a little bit and know a few words. You have to know all the words because you are the expert in the room that is facilitating communication as an interpreter, which is oral communication and written communication, which is translation. So if I'm in a room as a medical interpreter, as a healthcare uh, interpreter with a, a physician and a patient, I can't stumble on not knowing the medical terminology and the body parts and uh, how to pronounce certain uh, words and understand systems and how they work and, and function in the body to be able to facilitate that conversation between these two parties. The provider is giving a diagnosis and perhaps recommending treatment or medication. The patient is ill. They want to get better. They want to know what they need to do, how they can be compliant. And because of the language barrier, here I come as the interpreter to bridge that communication gap. So it's very important work. It's great work. It's really uh, remarkable in terms of the impact on, um, let's say, the healthcare system for those who don't speak English uh, proficiently in the United States or in any other country. If you're visiting in China, for example, and you had to go to the ER because you broke your leg or something, uh, wouldn't you like someone who spoke your language, whatever it is, to explain to you what the procedures are, how much your bill is going to be, how long you might be in the hospital, et cetera. So that is the function of ours, 
to bridge that communication uh, gap and to to remain um, as a true professional, we remain objective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have to keep our biases in check and we're simply there to provide communication services. I cannot omit anything that's been said. I cannot change it. I cannot add to it. Mm -hmm. And these are things that you will learn as you develop your skill set by going to training. So for interpreters and translators, there are skill sets that you must acquire. So it requires training and education. And so what I go back to the youth, the first Mm -hmm. thing is mastering the language. Mm -hmm. Learn that language. Mm -hmm. And then if you're really interested in language, you must also learn about the culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. keeping in mind that um, a language can be spoken in many parts of the world, which also has different cultures. So we'll take, for example, French. Um, French is spoken in Haiti, which is where I'm originally from, Mm. but it's also spoken in France, in Canada, in Montreal, Quebec, which is a French province, Mm French-speaking province. Mm -hmm. It's spoken in Martinique and Guadeloupe. It's spoken in some African countries like um, Gabon and um, uh, um, Ivory Coast, Mm -hmm. Cote d'Ivoire. Um, Lots of places. And each place has their own regional dialect, accent, uh, you know, colloquial expressions and vernacular that, um, you know, I, although we speak the same language, there is that cultural aspect of it as Mm -hmm. well. So it's, it's not only, you know, the fluency, but it's also the culture. They intertwine. Oh, Lynn, I love this part of it here. We're talking to our young people. We're going to do some phases here. We'll do this to our young people. Let's stick to what Lynn wants to do here today on this area. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, welcome to Power Connections. If you're just joining us, that is the awesome and talented and beautiful Miss Lynn Henry Roach, ladies and gentlemen. And for those who don't know, she's an interpreter and translator, one of the best on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, and educator as well. But you know, Lynn, I was taking some notes there while you was talking. For our young people, please understand, because we do a lot of career planning and, uh, and, and education for our young people today at, at the level of middle school and up, and sometimes even earlier, but in middle school and up for sure. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lynn, but this is a high demand area, ladies and gentlemen. High oh, demand yes. area. Let, let me share with you yeah. um, students who want to learn ling- languages. Yeah. I encourage you yeah. and parents and yeah. the community, I hope yeah. you're listening. Yeah. Please encourage them to study that language yeah. and to master it. Yeah. Don't let them quit and give up just because it's difficult. Anything you're learning, it takes time. So you have to be patient with yourself. Mm-hmm. And sooner or later, if you stick with it, you will acquire the knowledge yeah. and you also have to practice it. But um, as far as demand, oh, the yeah. demand is tremendous. Think yeah. about it. Globally, yeah. Yeah. translators and interpreters are an essential part to the yeah. global economy. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Think of the last time you bought a television or a mixer or a camera yeah. or, a te- or you know, your cell phone yeah, we and your instructions yeah. for the user guide yeah. are sometimes not only in English, but they're in Japanese, they're yeah. in French, they're in Spanish. They're multilingual. Someone had to do that work. Yeah. That's the work of a translator, Yeah. okay? Know. Even on your shampoo bottle, yeah. you might have different labels in different languages on how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the work that translators and, and interpreters do all around the world. Yeah. Um, think about the Olympics. Yeah. When you have the Olympics, oh, you yeah. have, the Olympics has officially two languages, yeah. English and French, and then the host country. Mm-hmm. So if you are in like uh, Tokyo, the host country, uh, they speak Japanese. So yeah, yeah. you would notice that when they made the announcements of who won the medals, it was done in those three languages. Okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. And other in other multi um, national multilingual mm-hmm. agencies include who? The World Health Organization, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the IMF, Intermonetary Fund, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, European Union. Yeah, you know, global. This is all the global. General Assembly in the United Nations, of course, we, when we think of diplomats, global, 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 all across the planet we're talking about here. That's wonderful, Lynn. I love it. Yes. I love it. That's praise God. You know, Lynn, I just wrote down too. This is a great topic for us today. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Power Connections with the awesome Lynn uh, Henry Roach. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, how about this one, uh, Lynn, is friendship and relationship building if you know the language. 
of the uh, of the area. How, can you talk a little bit about how important that is to be able to? It's relationship building. It's culture. Yeah. It's understanding. It's yeah. it's yeah. Um, openness. You know, yeah. Yeah. I can walk it. I you know one of the best places I've ever worked is working as an interpreter for yeah. the school system when we had a whole department yeah. that was multicultural and we came from all different backgrounds in all different countries, yeah. Yeah. and we would share our food at lunch. Yeah. And it was like I was learning different foods yeah. and different yeah. ways of cooking things. It's just a wonderful exchange. Yeah. So yeah. it can start with the language and then you branch into the culture and yeah. traditions and customs. Yeah. And then before you know it, you find that you have a lot of similarities, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. more so than differences. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, yeah, another very benefit. that's a benefit, folks. And we're talking about learning languages, ladies and gentlemen, today with Lynn. And we want you to make sure that our young people get exposed. That's probably the biggest thing, Lynn, that we haven't had is exposure. Exposure. I want you guys to push this out all across your network, ladies and gentlemen. When you get the recording or send it out, share this out with everybody because Lynn has a system there for you guys where your young people can get involved in the area of learning languages, ladies and gentlemen, whatever they want to do. But, but Lynn, what I want people to understand as an engineer you got to understand the benefits, folks, the benefits of learning. Don't say you can't learn a language. Yes, you can. But the benefits outweigh the uh, well, the opportunity, folks, that, for you today. We want you to learn because guess what? It's going to be life-changing. I wrote down life-changing, Lynn. It's going to be life-changing for them. Guess what? Uh, also, too, I love this part. If you love to travel, why not travel with three or four languages in your head, head pocket, ladies and gentlemen? You know, as well. Oh, yeah. A little about that. If you don't mind, Lynn, the opportunity to travel as well. If when you learn the language of the land you're going to or being working in, you're going to get opportunities like re you kind of mentioned some already. But can you talk a and little bit about the travel opportunities? <laughs> Travel opportunities, student exchange programs. Uh, they have them in the high schools. They have travel programs as young as the middle schools, parents. Please, I know sometimes it's a sacrifice to spend that money, but the experience, it's a, it's a world of experience for your children to broaden their horizons, to learn about other language, cultures, food, customs, and to come back and really appreciate where they're from. <laughs> really, you have to have a perspective of having left home to know what home is, yes. I would say. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing I wanted to also mention as far as uh, your previous question, just to go back a little, you yeah. mentioned about the demand. Yeah. Well, just to give you some statistics, mm -hmm. um, when I was writing my book, um, A Multi-Million Dollar Industry Translation and Interpretation, The Future mm -hmm. of Language Careers, the reason I chose that title is because of the demand yeah. in the industry. Yeah. It's exploding. Yes, the yes. growth projection is plus 25% job growth, mm -hmm. according to the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics yeah. put out by the U.S. Department of Labor. So uh, an average growth in an industry at 3 or 4% or 5% is about relative stability. Mm -hmm. When you start talking 13, 14%, that's like really good. Yeah. So 25% is blowing yeah. it out the water, if you right. will. Right. So that. this is like a demand yeah. that they can't even meet right now. Right. Right. And the money that's being spent, just to give you a little bit of idea, yes, uh, the Department of Defense, I'm just going to mention a few um, yeah. entities in the government. Mm -hmm. And this is just government. I'm not even talking private sector. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in 2017, I'm quoting um, that the top five United States government agencies, their budgets for trans Translation and Interpretation Services, Department of Defense, $236 million. Mm -hmm. Department of Justice, $125 million. Wow. Department of Homeland Security, $54 million. Wow. State Department, $42 million. And Department of Health and Human Services, $14 million. Wow. When you think of Department of Health and Human Services, think mm -hmm. about those brochures and the uh, that are put out in different languages that you yeah. see at different clinics and health departments and what have you. Yeah. That's what the translators are doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it, Lynn. That is powerful. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you see why we got Miss Roach here with us today, ladies and gentlemen. For those who are just joining us, this is Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn. Talking with Lynn Henry Roach later brings over 25 years of the industry of experience and interpret as, as an interpreter and translator and educator in the, and business leader, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Roach is originally from Haiti and has immigrated to the United States uh, at the uh, from the uh, age of three, ladies and gentlemen. So we're excited about her being with us today. 
and Lynn, I get so excited because of the opportunity that is before you, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the key, Lynn, you, everybody listening on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the, all the ones you're going to see this on, you must share this with your children. Share this information with this children, with your children, ladies and gentlemen, so they can understand what's available to them. I'm finding out, I think we talked about this before, Lynn, I found out and nothing, not knocking the career planners or the career um, uh, people at the schools, but they're not telling the, the kids this stuff, Lynn. Um, yeah, we have to educate the, our guidance counselors about this profession. I don't get and it. Let me... <laughs> yeah, go ahead, yeah, please. I don't get why they're not doing their job. Please help me somebody. Go ahead, Lynn. <laughs> and that's why we want to empower the community and the parents so that they know to ask more about this. But um, I want to also share about American Sign Language. That is also interpretation. Gotcha. So uh, American Sign Language is particular to the United States. That's why it's called American Sign Language. There are other sign languages in different languages in different parts mm -hmm. of the world. Different. But uh, ASL, um, which is covered under the American Disabilities Act, which mm -hmm. requires that folks that are um, hearing impaired or hard of hearing, that community yes. be afforded interpreters um, and just telephone assistance. You've seen some of the uh, different equipments that are available on telephones or video chats, what have you, mm -hmm. to facilitate their communication, as well as having uh, signing uh, interpreters at mm -hmm. medical appointments, uh, legal appointments in the school system with mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So I also want to uh, uh, share about uh, American Sign Language as a yeah. language. And really, American Sign Language has paved the way for foreign language interpreters to be accepted because they were the first um, under the American Disabilities Act in the early 90s to uh, mm -hmm. get that recognition. Mm -hmm. And um, the foreign language interpreters are subsequently being able to follow in terms of credentialing uh, and in the pathway that um, the uh, American Sign Language um, Registry for the Deaf have already instituted their um, rules and regulations wow. and accreditations. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with uh, Lynn Roach, ladies and gentlemen, on, uh, on the power of learning languages, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, we're going to do a commercial break right now, Lynn, for you. How do people get in touch with you right now? Say, I want to learn more about this language. I need to get my granddaughter, grandson involved in this area. I need to get this to my schools, whatever it takes. But Lynn, if you don't mind, how do, can they get in touch with you today? Well, you can always uh, visit me at my website, which is For You Language Services. Dot com. So it's the number four, the letter U, languages with an S, services.com. And there you can send me an email or my email also is info at for you language services.com. And if you want to call me, you're welcome to, oh my, 404. <laughs> 404-594-3298. If you're in the local Atlanta area, please. Um, be sure to contact me or from where anywhere. I'd be happy to answer questions. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a student, um, language is, is, is in, in culture is what makes the world go round. Absolutely. Because everybody comes from somewhere. Everybody has their traditions and their customs. And then now you emigrate here, let's say to the United States, the great melting pot, the great experience. Yeah. And how do we navigate these different systems when we're not fluent in a language? And again, that comes back to why it's mm -hmm. so necessary to have translators and interpreters available uh, to help facilitate that communication. Mm -hmm. Think about the websites you visit now. Yeah, yeah. Multi, multilingual uh, website, you just push the button. Do you want it in French? Do you want it in Spanish? What language would you like to read your information in? Oh, I love it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we're, I'm so excited about this area. We're really hitting education today for our young people, for our, uh, anybody for that matter, but specifically in the school systems, if you will, and outside. Because as you know, Lynn, there's a lot of people that homeschool their children too as well. And they're doing a great job at that. So we want all the home, I'm going to make sure all the homeschool uh, groups get this information too, ladies and gentlemen, where your son or daughter can learn another language or several languages. We got some brilliant children out there, ladies and gentlemen, but guess what? Their little minds are saying, feed me, feed me, feed me the right stuff, you know, so I can learn stuff, you know. And this is one of the areas, guys, we want to make sure our, our, our families get information about our neighborhoods, our communities. And, and uh, uh, Lynn, I, I wrote down too here, that this can affect HR, you know, human resources. Uh, if you didn't know a third, second language, you'd probably be in high demand to be able to 
to be able to communicate with some of the industry areas, depending on what it is, of course. I was thinking about healthcare. You talked about that. Now, that's a, that's a huge one right there. Healthcare, for sure, because we don't want no mistakes on my body because I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> so we talk about the left leg and, the, and they take off the right leg because I, I said the wrong one, you know, wrong word. So that's why it's important to be very fluid but also very, very professional, but also very uh, uh, specific, if you will, and, and, and basically know what you're doing <laughs> in that area. That's why the training is so intense and so needed as well. And of course, I always think about construction too, as well. When, you know, when you're building something, you got to communicate with you know, your employees. That's one way to do it. If you're getting uh, some skilled employees that have different languages, uh, may not speak English totally, right? But they speak their language guess what, guys, you'll be very valuable as a foreman or as, as a supervisor in that particular business as well. So th this area of language affects uh, just about every area of, of our economy, if you will, so to speak, Lynn. So I'm excited for you as well in that area. That is so powerful. Well, let's talk to our, uh, Lynn, let's talk to our adults a little bit. Those say, I'm, man, I'm a little bored. I don't know what I should be doing. I need to do something. How about my baby boomers? Maybe they can learn a little language too as well. Let me share with you. I'm going to give you two apps that anybody of oh, any God. age from who can read, if you can read, you can do this. Oh, I, I don't care how old you are or what you've been doing before. <laughs> Find some time and all, let me share with you. Yeah, please. 20 minutes a day is all you need. Oh, I love 20 it. 20 minutes a day. If you can't do 20 in one sitting, do 10 yeah. in the morning, 10 in the evening. Wow. Here's what, here's what you're going to do. Yeah. Duolingo.com. D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O.com. Wow. It is a free app available. Now, they have a paid version like all apps, right. but there is a free one that's available. I use it. It's yeah. free. Yeah. That where you can select what language you would like. They have over 140 different languages. Wow. Wow. And so you can set it for English and let's say Portuguese or English, um, Mandarin Chinese, uh -huh. English, Arabic, wow. whatever it is that you're trying to learn. <laughs> I love okay. It. And you just, and, and it, it, it can give you an assessment to see yeah. where you are. Cause sometimes, yeah. you know, a little bit, maybe from yeah. high school, yeah. but you don't know everything. You right. don't remember right. everything. Yeah. So yeah. it will give you, it will give you an initial assessment wow. and then you can, it will place you where you need to start. Uh, and it's free. Give us that one Duolingo. again. Duolingo. Duolingo. D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O. Duolingo. It's the number one app for le uh, learning languages, by the way. Wow, that's powerful. Here's another one I'll give you, another free one. Mm -hmm. It's called B, as in like a B, -Z B, B E E Lingua. L-I-N-G-U-A. B Lingua. Ah, oh, got it. And what that is, is a wonderful app that has to do with reading. Yeah. So it increases your reading comprehension, your speaking, mm -hmm. but what it is, is you're reading in your, uh, your native language and yeah. then the other language, the, your target language. Mm -hmm. So I can be reading something in English as well as in Portuguese to see if I'm understanding yeah. it correctly. Right, right, right. That's powerful. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. So those are two apps that anybody, yeah. please yeah. check yeah. them out. They don't cost anything. It's just your time and you may really, really enjoy it. And they even set reminders to tell you to practice. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, you can't beat that. I can't beat that, ladies and gentlemen, they remind yeah. you. And all you have to do is plan well, plan your time well to be able mm -hmm. to participate in that. But also too, ladies and gentlemen, you can do that uh, pretty much any time during the week, uh, during the weekend. The key is to keep your mind sharp, ladies and gentlemen, keep your mind sharp, keep your skills sharp, how about this, Sister Lynn? Add it. You'll be able to add it to your resume when you're certified, so to speak, in that area. Too Absolutely. As well. And I'm sure your phone, your email will be blowing up, uh, wanting you to come in for an interview to see if we could you know, get hired. Or how about this? You can start your own business, can't you? Once you get certified real good, you can start your own business in, in farming. Absolutely. Stuff. Well, you know, it's, it's limitless. So I started off in-house working for a school. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, after a while, I branched out and, and started my own company for you, Language yeah, Services, which is, uh, thank you. That's been 14 years now um, yeah. in Atlanta. And um, it gives me the opportunity to work on projects that I want to work on. Yeah, you know, exactly. it gives me the flexibility to work in collaboration with others. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now I'm branching out into training 
as yeah, part of yeah. uh, my services oh. to train others who want to come into the field or those who have been working in a field. But let's say as a volunteer, they're not getting paid. They don't know how to get their certification right. uh, or some people who perhaps you're a nurse mm -hmm. and you're doing double duty. Right. In other words, you, you're right. fluent in a language right. that your office has a lot of patients that come in that speak and they expect you to do double duty as the nurse, as well as the interpreter. Right. Well, they shouldn't be doing that. They should be right. compensating you yeah. and let you wear the hat as the interpreter or the nurse, right. but not both. Exactly. So I talk to our uh, professionals out there and I say, you know, get your certification yeah. so that you can get your compensation and oh. be recognized as a professional in that field as an interpreter. Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk to my nurses out there because I love my nurses. Lady. They've been in healthcare here in Atlanta and nurses are amazing. You guys are amazing. Doctors, you are amazing. All the, uh, anybody in the healthcare industry is amazing right now. And we yes. take our hats off to you, salute you. But I want to encourage our nurses specifically right now to look at the language area. If you just want yeah. to- Our med techs, our yeah. receptionists, yeah. all of those folks that are on the front line yep. who are doing double duty and not getting yeah. compensated. Right. And then also the training. The training is key because yeah. you don't want to make mistakes. Right. You know, right. um, you don't want to be put in a position that you're not sure of what you're doing right. and uh, it can cost someone's life or a grave mistake. Absolutely. So the training is essential. Yeah. Uh, when you go through interpreter training, it's pretty intense. You do yeah. role plays and simulation of what if yeah. And, you know, sometimes working in a hostile environment, you don't always have cooperative people. Right, right, <laughs> so right. how do you react to all this? You know, yeah, exactly. so the tra training is, is very important. The, la the linguistics, the language, yeah. the terminology, mm -hmm. how uh, the operation of, you know, how healthcare flows in terms of hospital, uh, you know, patient flow and just understanding where you're working. You know, the court system, how they operate, the school districts, how they operate understanding that environment in which you work. Absolutely. Also, too, Lynn, I was thinking about in the health, well, actually anywhere, of course, for sure. But can you tell us about how important it is for chaplains to have those languages as well? Yeah, oh, thing. yes. The chaplains are very much uh, active in the healthcare. care. Um, almost yeah. all the hospitals yeah, I've been exactly. to yeah. have them in-house. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, sometimes they are of that culture that they're able right. to pray with them or what right. have you or comfort them, right. but not always. So right. being able to have uh, the multiple language skills or have an interpreter even available yeah. to yeah. help that person if they want to get something off their chest. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Um, if they, um, you know, they want to receive that prayer or that yeah well right. wish, you know, that they have someone to be able to facilitate that. I have done that. I have been yeah. in churches where I have interpreted during a prayer, you wow. know, for the congregation right. because they had uh, visitors who didn't right. speak the language. Right. Right. So we wanted to make sure nothing was missed. Absolutely. And that makes it so personal because people say they took the time to handle, you know, basically take care of me, if you will, whether it's a visitor or you're part of an uh, organization. You took the time to, to really understand who they are and uh, let them get there. You know, the other area too, Lynn, I want to talk about training. What's now, uh, obviously, who's certified? Who, how do I know? I'm going to use me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, taking some languages. But how do I know when I'm ready? And also, how long does it take the training and, and the cost? Can you talk a little bit about that, please, those things? Sure. So um, the training depends where you jump in at. And I'll say why, because people come in at different points into the career. So for example, you could be a student yep. who was, uh, you know, studied in high school and college, maybe it was your major and mm -hmm. you decide you'd like to go into interpreting. Maybe your school has an interpreter program or a translation program mm -hmm. where you can actually do a certificate. So you can get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. Or you can be uh, an, an individual, a professional who's all, already working and you just want to take the seminar training, which mm -hmm. is a minimum of 40 hours for the medical health care interpreting certification. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, that is to say the basic prerequisites to be able to sit for the exam. Gotcha. So you have to do training to even sit for the exam. Oh. And then once you pass the exam, then you're certified. Okay. And the certifications, um, they last about four years. Okay. And during that time, you're required to do continuing education in your field, uh, mm -hmm. attend, you know, seminars and trainings and mm -hmm. keep up with mm -hmm. what's going on and trends and policies, best practices, yeah. et cetera. Wow. Um, as far as costs. So 
Um, you have two basic, I'll just speak, I'm just right yeah. now concentrating on medical interpreting right. or health care right. interpreting, but yeah. each discipline has their own certification body. Gotcha. So legal interpreting is a different path. Gotcha. Medical is a different path. And now they have one for what used to be under the umbrella of community interpreting, which could be social services as well as schools. But now they're having one specific for educational interpreting right. um, because you're dealing with children that have perhaps special special needs, uh, special yeah. ed. Right, right. And so uh, there's specific terminology that you need to know yeah. when addressing wow. those issues. Wow. and those terminologies. Wow. Um, That's powerful. So yeah. how long does it take to get certified? Really, it can be very quick. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, depending on how long, when there's a training that's available, if you're ready for the training, mm -hmm. the first step is you have to do a language assessment. You have to know how fluent are you in the language before right. you even go and you sign up for a training. Yeah. Because if you're not fluent in the language right. sufficiently, you're not going to be able to pass the exams. Right. Right. And you're not going to be able to do a, well, a good job. Even yeah. if you pass the exam, you're not going to be competent yeah. and you don't want to set yourself up for failure. Right. So it might mean brushing up on your language right. skills, exactly. you know, yeah. and that might even mean in English. If right. you're a translator, right. maybe yeah. you need to brush up on your grammar, yeah. you know, in yeah. English, you know, whatever your weak point is, yeah. you right. have to always be willing to improve yourself and to better yourself. So it's an ongoing process, oh, just wow. like any industry. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah, the thing is, is to be serious about it, right? Obviously, be serious about it. Have fun with it as well. And I'm sure there's people out there say, oh, I always wanted to do another language, you know? So we want you to get to it, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we're going to take another commercial break for Lynn, too, as well. I'm going to get out the way because I want you to see this beautiful uh, uh, flyer, if you will, that she sent over. So I want to go over that real quickly. I'm in the background. You see up there, uh, you can uh, get in touch with Lynn at Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. You can get in touch with her on LinkedIn, okay? You can get, of course, you got her email up there as well. And, of course, uh, you got her website as well, ladies and gentlemen. I want you guys to go to her website, Twitter account. You can email her, folks. You can give her, uh, get her, definitely get it on LinkedIn for sure. A multi-million dollar industry, translation and interpretation, the future of in language careers. This is her book. Lynn Henry Roach, ladies and gentlemen, a brilliant woman here that has put this together for you guys. I want you guys also to, uh, if she approves it, you guys give her a contact so she can be on your show. Anybody got a show out there, you need to get her on your show as well, guys. I want you guys to encourage, uh, give her a call or contact and say, hey, I'd like for you to come on, talk to my young people, talk to my adults, you know, talk to your organization about language, ladies and gentlemen. This is so important, Lynn. I get so excited because it's an educational piece for people and it keeps your mind sharp ladies and gentlemen nobody should be saying today i'm bored what are you bored of go get a language you won't be bored after that <laughs> you know? so we want get that language and then travel to that country yes. absorb yourself in that culture yes. enjoy that food and music and everything else Absolutely. and the people Absolutely. uh it's wonderful to speak yes. another language it's an immediate uh connection Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. It's an immediate connection because it's something you have in common with a person. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as for our older uh, audience, let me share yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, this is learning a language. You want to talk about training your mind to yes, do something yes, and to keep you sharp. Learning a language is absolutely one of the best things you can do to, to yeah. really keep your memory and sharpen your, um, you know, your intellectual skills as far as uh, the linguistical skills. They say learning a language is easier when you're younger, but I really think it's more about patience. Okay. I think folks give up before they get to over that hump gotcha. of mastering something. So yeah. I say stick stick with it. I say try those apps, which are really yeah. interactive and funny and yeah. the little cartoons and they sing songs. I mean, they're really yeah. interactive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're not going to be bored at all. Oh, I you love know. it. I love it. Matter of fact, I'm going to make sure I got those right because we want to make sure you got them, guys, on these apps. And that's Duolingo. That's D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O. -O. Is that correct? Let me make yes. Sure got that. Yes. Duolingo. Uh, lingo, excuse me. And the next one is B-Lingua, which is B-E-E-L-I-N-Q-U-A. Is that correct? G-U-A. G-U-A. Very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah, Lingua. Lingua. Uh -huh. Very good. Yeah. yeah. And that's for reading. Uh, comprehension, um, articles, books, all yeah. kinds of things, oh, uh, yeah. even current events. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here on Power Connections. You can see why we got Sister Roach on today, ladies and gentlemen. She is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, 25 years in the industry. 
an experienced interpreter and translator and educator and business leader in the state of Georgia. Matter of fact, I wanted to ask you one more question. As when you get certified, uh, Lynn, is that good for across the nation or do you have to get certain certifications for certain states? Brilliant question. Uh, with the uh, medical field in particular, it's a national certification that you would have that would be good wow. anywhere, wow. as well as with legal when you get to a certain level. Yeah. Wow. Now, states, every state is different. They don't, some, yeah. uh, okay. and every organization is different, like the employers right. themselves. Some don't even require you to be certified. Mm -hmm. However, if you want top dollar and yeah. right. more opportunities, you want to get that certification because that says that you're qualified yeah. uh, because you've gone through rigorous training. Yeah. to be able to do this. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the stamp of approval that you want for translation or interpretation. You just want to be the best that you can be, Absolutely. you know, and that's all we require you. Mm -hmm. Best practices say that, you know, I might, you might have two interpreters in the room and we each have a little bit variation or nuances yeah, in right. our language, right. but I have to do it to the best of my ability. And that's all I'm, I'm required to do. Mm -hmm. So with that being true, I have to be as prepared as I can be. Mm -hmm. So I have to spend time studying language, yeah. reading, yeah. Um, being more versed in some medical information and journals. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor, but I read a lot right. of medical yeah. information so that I'm competent when I'm doing yes. my job. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you mentioned a key word about understanding the terms and the words, if you will, during that particular issue or as to say opportunity there with that uh, language. So that's powerful. I love it. So that's great. I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn and my wonderful guest, ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Henry Roach. You know, Lynn, we got to have you back on periodically to update us on what's going on in this area because I'm really big on education, really big. I want you guys to never stop learning. Learn something, you know, learn anything you can, you know, in that area. So we're really excited about Lynn being with us on Power Connections. And I trust that you guys are enjoying this time with her. But also, I want you guys to push this out on your network, okay? You guys are pushing out everything else. I want you to at least tweet this out at least 50 times on your network, at least 50 times, so we can get some people interested in languages, ladies and gentlemen, that will benefit them, benefit others all across the globe. Matter of fact, folks will even pay you. If you do your part, they'll pay you to come see them, you know, to, to, to learn, uh, excuse me, to use your skills, ladies and gentlemen. So we're excited about that, Lynn. Very, very excited. Now, Lynn, and let me share one, one more thing about the uh, educational component. Yes. Yes. With the students, yes. with the students, you know, this is free. In yeah. Yeah. So yeah. before yeah. they get out and have to pay for it, right. have them, right. encourage them strongly to continue. Makes sense to and me. when they, you know, just, you know, this is free. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we take it and then try to make them stick with one language, get proficient in one language before you start adding others, you know? Um, and then also, like I said, the cultural opportunities, foreign exchange mm -hmm. programs, you know, start, you know, trying to budget for it. You know, I, you know, it's coming. The opportunities are there in the high schools for many kids yeah. and colleges. And I know it's expensive, but I'm telling you, the kids will have a, a tremendous opportunity and uh, it's a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity for some kids. Yeah. And um, as for the adults, um, <laughs> you know that if you work in HR, all my HR people out there, yeah. if you have a candidate that speaks another language, regardless of what that language is, yeah. they have a fluency and you have all things equal with another candidate yeah. that you're gonna pick that person with a language skill. Oh, a that. language skill is equally important as um, computer or digital skills mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just that valuable in Absolutely. terms of making you more competitive and giving yeah. you an advantage. Absolutely, Lynn, I love it. And we even talk about the business side, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it affects business. Matter of fact, it affects everything because we're a global economy now, ladies and gentlemen. You could be on the high seas uh, delivering products and uh, you need to know a language. I would think you need to know at least two or three languages if you're doing the high seas stuff, you know, delivering goods and services. So yes, it's powerful. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I hope, I trust that you enjoyed this today with Lynn, ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Henry Roach. She is, once again, 25 years, ladies and gentlemen, industry, experienced interpreter, interpreter and translator and educator and business leader. So we're so excited about her being part of the network. We are going to have her back periodically as she allows us to have her with us to share more information, any updates. Matter of fact, I was thinking about real quickly too, I'm sure there's an association of interpreters and association of translators that meet every now and then. You guys meet every now and then around the world, around the country to, to uh, collaborate and just enjoy each other. Do y'all do that too as well? <laughs> 
Yes, we have many conferences, we yeah. have networks, we have almost every state has their own local mm -hmm. chapters of associations. Yeah. 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 Uh, right here in Atlanta, we have the Ming, which is Medical Interpreter Network of Georgia. Wow. Wow. We also have the AAIT, which is the um, Atlanta Association of uh, Interpreters and Translators. I always have yeah. to remember the acronyms. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. So we, and then of course, you know, the major ones, which, which are the uh, CMI certification bodies, um, the American Council for Teachers of Foreign Language is another uh, certifying body that has a lot of information about linguistics and, um, you know, training and whatnot. Wow, that's powerful. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we got to get out of here. We got to let Lynn go. She's got other things to do, I'm sure, today as well. But Lynn, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Matter of fact, I think this is the first show on the planet. I've been doing this for 40 years in radio and television, if you will, so to speak. And this is the first, I think, the first time we talked about languages and interpretation. Wow. So, <laughs> well, I'm honored. Thank you, Kevin. I'm honored to have been here. I appreciate the platform and the opportunity to share uh, the information with our youth and uh, with everyone. Language yeah. is great. Language I, is powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to be calling on you again because we got ties to nonprofits, but we talk to our young people virtually right now. You got ties to other organizations, schools, and so forth. So we're going to start promoting you so you can come in and talk to our young people, at least for a few minutes anyway, during our career times and uh, so forth as well. So we're excited about that, Lynn, as well. Any final thoughts, Ms. Lynn, you have for the network? Any, any call to action? Matter of fact, I wanted to hear a few words from you, too, in different languages. Anything you wanted to say, a word or a phrase in a different language to help us out a little bit with, and with that also, too, said. Any final thoughts also as well? Merci beaucoup, Kevin. J'apprécie ça. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Thank right. you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And my final word is learn a language today. It's not too late for anyone. Oh, I love it. I love it. You heard it from Lynn, ladies and gentlemen. You need to learn a language. Get excited about your wonderful life, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing you can't do. But guess what? You have to have give yourself permission to do it. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? Nobody can force you to do something. Nobody can force you not to do something. But guess what? You can force yourself to do or make a decision to do everything you want to do that you want to do to learn, ladies and gentlemen. So get excited about learning. But the but the benefits, folks, that's what I get excited about, Lynn, is the benefits are going to be so greater, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be excited about what you've done. You're going to get paid on it. You may travel, you may not travel, you may stay within the state, but you're going to be helping a lot of people in that process. So it just depends. There's so many different ways that you can go, but it's all up to you. What do you want? I'm going to challenge you. What do you want? Go after it today, ladies and gentlemen, and add languages to that in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. So I'm excited about that, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you so much for joining us. Lynn, thank you so much for being with us today on Power Connections. Can't wait to have you back again as well. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Hey, ladies, I want you to have a great day as well. As Lynn just mentioned, we always leave you with always out love, out forgive, and out serve each other, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, there's nothing that you can't do. Y'all take care. Lynn, thank you so much for being with us on Power Connections. God bless you, everybody. Take care now.